A potent storm system likely over the next week to bring a return to organized severe weather for many in the lower 48, and that could track all the way through the East Coast, bringing the threat of strong winds, large hail, and tornadoes to millions. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Thursday, April 24th now, and uh, yeah, really in the heart of severe weather season, and it feels like it out there for a lot of folks. We've had these afternoon pop-up storms. We've had some pretty good hail storms, uh, some areas of wind, a couple tornadoes here and there, but that hasn't really been the big threat right over the past couple of days. I'll tell you though, I think that tornado threat's going to return in a big way by the time we go into this coming weekend and into next week as a more organized storm system is likely to work on through the lower 48. That's what we'll be talking about in today's video. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date with this ever-changing weather pattern and it always is here in the United States. So definitely again, have all of those uh, bells and icons and whistles hit so you're up to date with the latest model data and my analysis of that data. I also want to say thank you to our channel members. Appreciate you folks. And if you'd like to become a channel member, you can hit the join button down below next to the subscribe button. All right, folks, let's dive on into things and take a look at what's going on out there right now. Uh, basically, we've got this big shield of convection over the central part of the country. Uh, that has been the theme over the past couple of days. Pretty classic dry line setup. It's just going back and forth uh, throughout the day and into the nocturnal hours. And that has fired up some more organized severe weather, we'll say out west, but it's really more of a mesoscale setup meaning uh, there's no big storm system. It's just kind of these little areas of uh, good enough ingredients, if you will, for severe weather to fire off. We've also seen pop up thunderstorms and some of which that were severe and have been severe and will continue to be severe here over the southeastern United States. Had some pretty good hail storms in the Carolinas over the past couple of days. Uh, and we'll see more of those pop up thunderstorms as a stalled out stationary boundary continues to drape across that region. The next big storm, though, is still a ways away, still over the Pacific, and won't really work into the lower 48 till about Saturday. And then I think by the time we get to the start of next week, is likely to produce much more organized severe weather for many Americans here. And we'll be taking a look at that. Now, again, the reason we're not seeing organized severe weather now in the uh, normal sense is our upper level map. You'll notice we really don't have an organized area of vorticity. Uh, I will mention, though, throughout the next day or so, that is going to make a return for some of us as we move the map ahead in time here. Uh, you'll notice we're going to get this area of vorticity that finally kind of gets its act together a little bit more. You'll see some of these brighter colors come together. Uh, this is by tomorrow afternoon on Friday. I'll back it up just a little bit. You can see this more potent troughing and uh, more organized area of lift in the atmosphere that combined with uh, some little short waves down south is going to produce a little bit more of an organized shower and thunderstorm uh, threat by the time we go into tomorrow and Saturday. And I think a lot of us are going to get some rain out of it. We'll show it to you here coming up in just a moment. Uh, but then the next big storm you'll see it really starts getting going, works into California by about Saturday. And that'll be the next big story maker. Before we get there though, like I said, we do have more mesoscale type severe weather days currently. Uh, we could see some severe weather today into Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, back out even into Colorado, portions of Nebraska and Iowa. And this does include a small tornado threat. But like I said, uh, these have been supercell days the past couple of days out in the plains, but really more your classic uh, large hail, strong straight line wind threat. That'll continue into tomorrow, just a small area we're watching here near the Red River Valley and back into the Texas Panhandle from Shawnee, Oklahoma. To, um, uh, Amarillo back down to Lubbock for your Friday. Then we get to Saturday, another just small little area we're watching here, actually getting into the deserts of New Mexico. Roswell, Carlsbad, back over to Lubbock and up towards Amarillo again with that dry line setup could see some severe weather. All right, that's the setup and that's the outlooks from the SBC. Let's switch on over and now take a look at some mesoscale model data. All right, let's take a look at some mesoscale models. This is the latest run of our high resolution rapid refresh model. And I think doing a pretty good job of showing what's out there this afternoon. Like we've been talking about pockets of thunderstorms in and around uh, the eastern half of the country. A lot of rainfall back out of the plains the past couple of days. We've had these supercells, these clusters of multi-cells, uh, these mesoscale convective complexes as they're called. Back in the southeast, we've had more of these single cell to uh, multi-cell pop-ups that have definitely brought some large hail, some gusty winds, uh, and uh, pretty heavy rainfall as well with some lightning. But uh, as we go through the day today, yeah, really a lot like what we've seen the past couple of days. You'll notice uh, just more afternoon storms pop up. Here we go by the evening hour around 7 p.m. Yeah, we've got some rain here into the Tennessee Valley, back into Arkansas, uh, into portions of Alabama, Mississippi, the Carolinas, up into Kentucky, even West Virginia and Southwestern Virginia could get in on some rain. We've got some showers in and around the Northeast. We've got plenty of storms and some supercells mixing in out West. We've got clusters of multi-cells, uh, again, the supercells. So 
really just about anyone, no matter where you're watching, if you're east of the Rockies, you got a chance at some rain and a chance at some thunderstorms, some of which could become strong to severe uh, throughout the day today for your Thursday. And then I'll tell you ahead of time, we'll go into Friday. You'll notice that next storm system, again, not the big one we're watching, but that little piece of vorticity that kind of gets its act together a little bit more tomorrow uh, starts showing up on radar. Here's more of a surface low pressure. And with it, we get a more organized severe, or not severe, but a more organized shield of rainfall. These storms could become strong to severe though in isolated spots. You're not expecting an outbreak or anything like that, but a typical springtime thunderstorm activity. You can never rule out severe weather anywhere here, kind of in the circle, I would say, from the Ohio Valley southbound towards the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, and into Tennessee and Kentucky by your Friday afternoon. A couple pockets of hail, strong straight line winds, and some thunderstorms definitely going to be likely back in that region, I'd say, uh, by your Friday afternoon. That storm system, again, keeps on working east by tomorrow. As that's happening, another evening of supercells back out of the Texas Panhandle, Oklahoma Panhandle, uh, even into south uh, eastern Colorado and southwestern Kansas there. Yeah, Storm Chaser's dream out there. We've had a week of just supercell after supercell that continues into tomorrow evening. Although, again, the tornado threat not necessarily all that high. Uh, still uh, could see a couple brief ones out there. Uh, now, we'll get this into tomorrow evening. This is about uh, the midnight hour of Friday going into Saturday. We're going to have rumbles of thunder into the mid-Atlantic, into the northeast. If you got Friday night plans in places like Charlotte, Greensboro, up into Blacksburg, Virginia, West Virginia, Pittsburgh, uh, into the Finger Lakes, back out towards Buffalo. Could be a rainy event there, I think, for the evening and overnight of Friday going into Saturday. Then here we go. This is Saturday morning. This is as far out as the model goes. You'll notice... That storm system, again, really kind of getting its act together a little bit more. Nice shield of rain for the Northeast, I'd say, by Saturday morning. Although, again, that's as far out as this model goes. You get the idea, though, uh, that rain kind of working off east towards the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and into the Southeast as well. Uh, now, taking a look at the supercell composite, I think this is a good way to determine who's going to see more severe weather and who's going to see maybe uh, lower chances of severe weather. Not 0%, but just lower in general. Here's this afternoon. You can see the highest threat of supercells. Yeah, back where we've been talking, into the plains. It's where we've got a little bit more wind shear. I'll show you a sounding here coming up next, but uh, just higher ingredients for supercells that way. Now, could we get one or two to mix in down into the Southeast? Uh, out of this pattern, absolutely we could. And we have seen that over the past couple of days. One or two supercells has gotten going in the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, even into Alabama and Mississippi. Just the much higher supercell threat back out into the southern plains. Keep it going ahead in a time here. We'll get this into Friday. Uh, another day of a couple supercells back into the southern plains. See, that's where the highest threat there is into Texas. But again, we could see an isolated storm become supercellular in nature. And then to the Ohio Valley, back down into the southeast. Not a huge deal, but something we're definitely watching. And I'll keep you up to date on. Now, uh, we'll move this into our Saturday afternoon. And again, you could see some energy from maybe a couple storms into the mid-Atlantic. But still, the highest threat back out into uh, the uh, southern plains. And the reason for that comes back to the sounding. You know, we show these all the time on the channel. I think the wind shear out west is just more favorable. You can see in our hodograph, that's this uh, kind of box on this side. See how we have this curve to this line here? Yeah, that tells me we've got a pretty good amount of low-level wind shear. And you can see it well here with the wind barbs. Classic clockwork wise turning uh, and um, that's going to definitely lead to vorticity in a way that helps to produce strong storms. Also, pretty uh, high amount of cape out here. Check this out. Three to four thousand joules per kilogram of cape. That's a lot of thunderstorm fuel. Also, starting to get more surface moisture. This is a sounding for today from the NAM and a lower LCL. Yeah, a tornado or two definitely could form out of this. Would not surprise me whatsoever uh, with plenty of spin in the atmosphere and a lot of thunderstorm fuel. It will stay that way into the southern plains through the next couple of days. Alrighty, let's switch gears now and talk about what's to come with that next big storm system that's going to, I think, bring a much more organized severe weather threat by early next week. All right, so what's going to lead to this uh, more organized severe weather threat by next week? Well, it's all going to come back to our upper level map as it normally does. Currently, the reason, again, we're lacking a more organized threat of severe weather is we have this big ridge over the lower 40s. That's definitely leading to these pop-up storms, but it isn't leading to these strong surface low pressures. And yeah, we'll get a surface low by tomorrow into Saturday, but nothing, you know, off the charts. That'll change, though, by next week. Take a look out west. We've got this big trough of blue uh, over the Pacific. That's going to work into the west coast by the time we get towards the second half of this weekend and into early next week. You can see that here. That kind of dips into California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona. And here we go by 
Sunday afternoon, getting ready to work out of the Rockies. And by early next week, that's going to lead to a severe weather potential east of the Rockies. Uh, now, kind of a double whammy here. We've got this uh, big trough that's going to lead to the lift in the atmosphere. That's going to bring um, all sorts of ingredients, including wind shear for severe weather. Uh, but in front of it, we got this big ridge. So that's going to lead to a big ramp up in Gulf moisture and warmer temperatures. That's going to increase the instability. You combine the two. Yeah, that's a recipe for severe weather and a more uh, much more organized sense. And you can see that works through the Rockies. Uh, into the plains by Monday, Tuesday, and then tries to work all the way through the east. You can see by the time we get right here, that troughing does eventually get to the Appalachia chain by uh, about uh, seven to 10 days from now. So a ways to go for folks east of the Mississippi, but I definitely feel confident folks in the northern plains are definitely going to get locked into severe weather here by early next week. So here's our day five outlook. So this would be for next Monday, if my math serves me correctly. Uh, just early next week in general, though, really is the time frame to watch. So this could move back and forth a little bit. Uh, anywhere from Duluth all the way back down to Oklahoma in the threat for severe weather, but already an enhanced risk. Uh, this is the highest threat that they can issue this uh, far out in time for Rochester, Des Moines, Omaha, Cedar Rapids. I think this is going to be all hazards as well. Strong wind, large hail, and isolated, uh, maybe even uh, more of widespread threat of tornadoes by the time we get to early next week. Then by the time we get to about Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, here we go into the Ohio Valley, into Missouri, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Indiana, Ohio, Southern Michigan could get in on that severe weather threat. So you get the idea here, folks. Definitely not leaving the severe weather potential. In fact, I think it's going to ramp back up by the time we get into early next week in a pretty big way. Uh, now, one of the reasons for this, again, I showed you on the last map. Let's show it to you in the vorticity sense here as well. And uh, I think you'll be able to kind of see how this works. A big trough comes into the uh, western U.S. This is by Sunday morning. We get it right here, though. This would be Monday, and let's do Monday afternoon. We've got this big area of spin out in front of it. That's where we have our divergence aloft, just a ton of lift in the atmosphere uh, over portions of the northern plains. That's why that severe weather threat's so high. And at the surface, we're going to have that dew points. Uh, those dew points surging back northward, warmer temperatures, instability, plus lift in April. Yeah, that's a perfect recipe for severe weather. That's just Monday afternoon. Check it out, though. We get into Tuesday afternoon. Again, I think another day of severe weather. You can see almost a secondary area of troughing develops, and I think it's just going to lead to an active week. That then moves east, eventually tries to get to the Appalachia chain by about next Friday or so. Uh, we'll see if that could bring severe weather to areas of the eastern seaboard. It's definitely possible. We need a little more time, though, for the models to lock that in. They've been a little wishy-washy on that threat, but definitely feeling confident in severe weather into the plains. Uh, you can see how this could unfold on the European model. Uh, here's the weekend system in the east. Not a big deal. More of a rainmaker than anything. Here comes the big storm potential. Right here we'll pause it Monday afternoon. Strong surface low. That's going to lead to a lot of lift. And as you can see with that lift, you get thunderstorms and severe weather to fire up Monday right in that threat area, area we watched. And then we go into Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, another threat area. Uh, check out the European. It's got convection firing all the way from Vermont all the way back down to Texas as you get this big drawn out cold front. It definitely could lead to severe weather Tuesday afternoon in a big area. Uh, so it'd be Monday, that'd be Tuesday. Now let's check it out into Wednesday and Thursday. Threat dies down maybe just a little bit, but then a resurgence of another storm crossing the Ohio Valley by the end of the work week could bring another return once again to severe weather in the eastern half of the country, specifically the Appalachia chain kind of eastbound there. Uh, now, the European Ensemble is feeling pretty good about this as well. You can see the threat for severe weather really increases. Here's Monday afternoon. Big threat area to watch. Highest over Minnesota, Iowa, Wisconsin, but stretching all the way back down to Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas for your Monday. Get to Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, check out that massive area to watch for severe weather. Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, into Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, the southern half of the state, back up into the Buffalo area. Severe weather potential on Tuesday. Then you can see that threat area tries to work east into the southeast and maybe even the mid-Atlantic by next uh, weekend and kind of the end of the work week. So we'll see how it evolves, but definitely it looks like a pretty active severe weather pattern. It's going to bring some rainfall as well for a lot of folks. Check it out here. We've got, uh, you know, this is rain through the next week. I definitely think we'll get beneficial rain for some, maybe rain that we don't need for others, but uh, the most or heaviest rainfall likely to fall over Dallas, Fort Worth, back up to Oklahoma City, southeastern Oklahoma, into the Ozarks. I do think pretty good rainfall into the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and even into the western Carolinas over the next week. We could use it there in the Carolinas. Pretty tough wildfire season we've been going throughout this way. We'll take the rain and then probably some pretty good rainfall, at least an inch or so up into the northern plains due to that severe weather threat on Monday that's really going to get the rainfall once again returning. 
All right, final thing we'll talk about are temperatures, assuming I pull up the temperature map uh, properly, which I did not do, but here we go, we've got it now. Uh, so temperature anomalies over the next uh, week or so, again, pretty warm in the east through the weekend, that storm system uh, that works through, gonna cool things down just briefly, I think by Sunday, see a little bit of blue working into the east, but after that, uh, you don't have to wait long for spring to return. Check it out. This is by Tuesday afternoon, back in front of the next storm system, a big warm up, uh, likely to once again return those very warm temperatures. And those kind of hang on for a little bit, it looks like. Could be fighting some blue, though, or maybe some more average temperatures by about 10 days from now. But either way, I don't see any big cool downs. I think relatively pretty spring like in the temperature department to match the rainfall that is on the way, as well as the severe weather. Alrighty, folks, that's all I've got for you on this Thursday. If you enjoyed the video, again, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe. I'll see you all next time.